This is a lesson on total welfare, consumer surplus, and producer surplus. I'm Ms. Simpson, and I'm recording this for my AP Microeconomics classes. Total welfare is known as the economic surplus, and it is sum of producer and consumer surplus. Total welfare is maximized at the point of allocative efficiency. Let's take a look at a graph. This is a perfectly competitive market graph in equilibrium. We know that the point of allocative efficiency is where supply equals to de the demand. So the area of total welfare is shaded in in green. This is like what I was showing you when we were in the first unit's graph where we had the marginal benefit was equal to the marginal cost and that was a point of allocative efficiency and how we tried to achieve the greatest part of the pie by getting to the point of allocative efficiency. Well, now we're going to start calling that area total welfare or economic surplus. Consumer surplus is what we'll look at first. We know as consumers we're always trying to get the lowest price possible. So sometimes when you go shopping, you're, you have an idea in your mind about exactly what it is that you want to pay to buy something that you want to get. But when you go there, you might find that the price is lower than what you were expecting. This is, in real people terms, consumer surplus. So let's take that dress that I bought. I was willing to pay $260 for a dress to wear to a wedding, but when I turned the price tag over, it was only $60. So to me, that was a great bonus. That $200 that I had, in, that I had saved by only paying $60 instead of $260 is what consumer surplus is. What am I going to do with $200? Well, I'm going to spend it on something else. So when we take a look at the difference between a price a consumer is willing to pay and the price that's lower that they actually pay, we call that consumer surplus. Let's take a look at this on a graph. Okay, here's our graph in equilibrium. And the area that's shaded in red is the area of consumer surplus. Notice that we have our demand curve and we have our equilibrium. At the equilibrium, if we follow the demand curve up to the top of the demand curve, we see that there are prices higher than the equilibrium price that consumers would have been willing to pay. They would have bought quantities less than the allocatively efficient or market quantity, but there were people willing to pay that higher price. So if we are to shade in the area of consumer surplus, we always want to look at the top of the demand curve down to the equilibrium price and back over to the price axis as the area of the triangle that we're going to shade in. By the way, the consumer surplus is always a triangle above the price to the demand curve to the price axis on every type of market graph that we look at. Producer surplus will be a little bit different in future units. The producer surplus is the difference between the price that a seller is willing to accept and the price that they actually accept. So for sellers, they're always trying to get a higher price. This is a law of supply. And if there is a market price higher than the price that they were willing to accept, we call that producer surplus. Let's take a look at this on the graph. Here's our graph in equilibrium and the area of producer surplus is shaded in in blue. On this market graph, it's a triangle below the equilibrium price to the supply curve all the way down to the price axis. So we see that on our supply curve, there would have been quantities less than the equilibrium quantity that sellers would have been willing to sell at prices lower than the equilibrium price. But when they got to the market, the price was higher, and this is going to benefit them greatly because this is money in their pocket in terms of more revenue than they expected and in terms, hopefully, of greater profits on down the line. If we're asked to calculate total welfare, we need to add the consumer surplus to the producer surplus. But first we need to remember that when we're calculating consumer surplus and producer surplus, we're going to have to use the area of a triangle formula, which is one half the base times the height. You probably learned this in geometry. Let's apply this to a graph, a market graph. So here we have the consumer surplus once again uh, shaded in red 
and we're going to use this graph which has numbers on it. So we're going to take the area of, a, of the triangle of consumer surplus as one half times the base. Okay, the base is 100. Okay, this is along the quantity axis. We see that 100 minus 0 tells us the value of that base. And then we're going to take the height. The height of this triangle only goes from the highest point on the demand curve, which is $20, down to the equilibrium price, which is $10. So 20 minus 10 is $10. So the area of consumer surplus will be 1 half, 100 times 10, so it's 1,000 divided by 2. The consumer surplus is equal to $500. Let's do the same thing for the producer surplus. The producer surplus is shaded in blue once again. And we see that uh, we have numbers on this graph as well. The area of producer surplus is one half times the base. So it's a distance along the quantity axis from zero to the equilibrium, which is 100, times the height. The height this time is the equilibrium price of $10 all the way down to the bottom of the supply curve, which in this graph goes all the way down to zero. So that gives the height of $10. So one half 100 times 10 is equal to $500. So the area of producer surplus in this graph is also $500. Let's take a look at it all together. On this graph, I have the same consumer surplus shaded in red, which had a value of $500. The same producer surplus shaded in blue, which has a value of $500. And I outlined it in green to indicate the total welfare, which is the entire area of consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Notice that the producer surplus and the consumer surplus are both $500, which means that the total welfare is $1,000. In a perfectly competitive market graph such as this one, the producer and consumer surplus are always evenly split. Okay, we can also say that when we're in allocative efficiency in future graphs that the producer surplus and consumer surplus will be evenly split. All right, let's see if you can calculate the producer surplus, the consumer surplus, and the total welfare on your own. This graph has different numbers, so please use the correct formula. All right, are you about ready for the answers? I'm going to move to the next slide. And let's do our calculations. Okay, the area of consumer surplus is shaded in red. It's one half the base, which is 50, times the height, 20 minus 12, which is 8. So one half 50 times 8 is equal to $200. We know that the producer surplus on this market graph will be the same. Of $200, but let's do the calculations. The area of the producer surplus is one half the base, which again is 50, times the height, 12 minus 4 is 8, one half 50 times 8 is equal to 200, which means that the total surplus, which is the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus, is 200 plus 200, so the total surplus is $400. You will be receiving more practice exercises and expect to see this on the AP test as well as your next unit test. Thank you.